However noisy the piece that I am writing may turn out to be, the business of putting it on the page is a silent one. Musically silent at any rate, there isn't a piano or a keyboard of any sort in my studio. I wouldn't know what to do with them. But a dip pen scratches and an inkwell clatters and there are other things you need if you're going to write in Indian ink and they all make a noise of sorts. I'm having a break from large orchestral pieces and in the short interregnum between huge forces I'm putting together an extended and ambitious guitar sonata. It may create a lot of intellectual noise but I do rather think the first performance will be softer than the scraping of my pen. I enjoy the silence, the scratch of the nib, and the sense of making an artefact. The paper that takes Indian ink is rather heavy and rather thick. I use bamboo holders for my nibs, which have a pleasing roughness to them, although they weigh almost nothing. I find it easiest to compose in my head and start putting things on the page when a piece is pretty visible and audible in my mind. It's like taking it down from dictation. The business of fooling around with the ink, choosing which of your ancient nibs from eBay is going to do the best job, and all the other things, does actually help the imagination to get to the point where writing can begin. Composing is a craft activity. There's an enormous amount of technique and structure and mathematics and all kinds of things involved, but I never talk about those. My programme notes try at least to be entertaining stories. And sometimes a piece begins with a picture. It really helps to go crazy on the page before you start. Empress of Blandings had to be written in a terrible hurry. I think it took me less than a week from beginning to end. I knew it was going to be an expression of Woodhousian chaos. And while I was rummaging through papers the other day, I found a page of scribbles that were the beginning of the piece. I think most composers are afflicted with synesthesia, and certainly in my case, the drawings and the scribbles do tend to carry over into the finished manuscript. In the drunks chorus, in hoping it might be so, there are a couple of pictures, and I notice I rather rudely refer to the tenors as shouting. That's not nice of me, because they sang it rather well. Professional performers pay an amount of attention to detail that is at times disquieting and always humbling. Every single demi semi quaver in an orchestral tutti is practised and perfected. And they very often notice relationships that you didn't know were in the piece yourself. I think the least a composer can do is make sure that every single note he writes on the page is precisely imagined and is precisely meant. My fiddling around with ink and blotter and pen is my way of doing that. It certainly isn't neat and tidy. It may seem a strange way to carry on in the age of the computer, but I think it's quicker than the computer because you go straight from the imagination to the page without any bleeping gadgets in the way. There's something else. My little bamboo pen holder and my scratchy nibs and my inky fingers are a magic wand. You make a few untidy marks on a piece of paper, and before you know it, those marks are filling a large concert hall, 
and thousands of people are hearing them. That's magic. That's real magic. Move over, Harry Potter. <laughs>